Hi there, hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to another video. Today we have the newest version of a very popular shoe line by Nike, and this is the Freak 6. So retail price is set at 140 US dollars. Some colorways might go for like $10 more. Uh, we see Nike do that a lot really, uh, such as the one with flowers all over it. That's 150 bucks. Uh, white pair with the black swoosh and some tiny speckles on there. That one is clean. Black colorway is kind of nice too. Just a simple take. I'm most excited for the upcoming Halloween release, but super happy with how this China exclusive red colorway turned out. I had my mother-in-law bring this to me from overseas. It shouldn't be too expensive on the secondary market, like StockX, if you're really interested. I'll point out some design details or Easter eggs towards the end. Anyways, I just wanna start off by saying that I see a lot of no shank play, no change outs. I mean, those are legitimate complaints, but I've been waiting to give the Zoom Freak line their flowers. At a random rec league game, or pickup sash, let's say you're running force, I can almost guarantee that you'll at least see one person wearing some model of this line. One was super popular, three I see a lot too. Five, now that they've been on sale, I see a ton of people playing in them and they're all pretty happy about it. Don't they deserve some major credits for that? I mean, popularity says a lot about a shoe. Uh, previously, before Nike dropped Kyrie, uh, the Kyrie's I think was the most popular shoe line at least based on what I see. Freak 5 Immortality 3, that is a super popular signature and budget shoe combo. I've seen some nasty deals on them, like 30 bucks for the Immortality is at the clearance store, 35 to 40 bucks for the Freak 5 Team Band colorways at a Nike outlet in Denver, like not too long ago. Realistically, a lot of you are most likely waiting for a delicious sale, right? I would honestly advise you to do so. They might have sold the majority of those pairs at full retail to sneaker reviewers. Now that they moved down to the Freak 6 and Immortality 4, I can tell you right now, I do like what I see or how I feel on feet. So how exactly does the Freak 6 do? Let's get right into everything you need to know about this newest Yana signature shoe. As to how the Freak 6 performs on the court, Cushion is essentially the same setup as the previous version. I like to call it a one piece from Nike, where you get either Cushion, Phylon, or some other type of foam. Here they use Cushion, I believe, with a zoom unit up front in the forefoot. We only get a two piece from their premium models, like the LeBrons and GT Jumps, uh, stuff like that. Anyways, the Cushion setup on the Freak 6 does feel pretty nice on feet. You get a lot of bounce back in the heel. It's soft. Mine is like full of compression marks already. Four foot cushion is substantial, I would say. Only if we're nitpicking, I somehow could feel the zoom unit on the Freak 5 a tiny bit more. And you don't get the quick snap type of responsiveness like on the KD16. So cushion gets a pass. Feels very comfortable. Smooth transition and decent core feel. Just nothing crazy here. Again, it all depends on the price you end up getting these at and which other shoes you're comparing it to. At full retail price, the cushion is a little bit underwhelming, to be honest. Soft and comfy, but prone to the bottom out problem over time. They're pretty light, coming in at around 375 grams for size 10 and a half. Lighter than average for sure. No excessive weight slowing you down. Nope, so that was nice. Traction is excellent. The pattern is made up of a bunch of his logos. On this colorway that I have, the entirely red Solar rubber also performs really well on dusty courts. It's just that the squeak is on and off. Well, only if you care about it. In terms of getting you to a hard and complete stop, moving sideways, backpedaling on defense, everything was good to go based on my experience. Dust pickup was manageable too. To be honest, I did wish they kept something similar to the Freak 5 also. Because remember, they almost did a smear traction thing, like their Kyrie 8 and GT Cut 2. That rubber is very sturdy. Uh, works very well against dust. 
I'd also consider it a durable also for outdoor use. This one, I have just started using my outdoors. So with regards to how they hold up over the long term, this is something that I can definitely update on. So far, so good. Just keep in mind that this time, my pair is from China. So they come in the XDR version with extra durable rubber. So you might have a slightly different experience with a North American release. Non-XDR version usually squeaks more. All in all, eight and a half out of 10 for the traction performance. Safe and effective. For the best fit, I think going true to size is still the most ideal option. Uh, they have standard width. So for a slightly wider feet like mine, you can definitely get in there just fine. Good comfort, uh, not much soreness for flat footers. I can personally attest to that. Lengthwise, the Freak 5 and 6, I noticed they both run a little bit long for me. I look long too. If I was to do these like hard stumps on purpose to test four foot traction, my toes would get pushed right to the edge. That might create some empty space back there. Jumping up and down on the court and just naturally playing in them, they didn't really feel loose or anything. Mild heel slippage if you prefer to play in thinner socks. But in a pair of Nike Elite socks, let's say, the fit was right on. For the majority of people, I'd say go true to size. If you have narrow feet, or if you really prefer to have a snug fit to make sure everything is secure enough, I think you can go down a half size too. And the reason why you can perhaps manage the size down has to do with the upper material, which we're gonna get into right now. Okay, material-wise, I gotta be honest, what they did on the Freak 5 was at least kinda unique, especially the type of leather they use to cover the toe box. Here on the Freak 6, the synthetic layer has more of a cheap feeling at hand. Makes a plasticky sound too, um, but they do conform to your movements very well. Flexible enough, breathable enough for sure. I think ventilation is a key improvement from the Freak 5. An average amount of padding for the most part. It's just that the upper construction might lack something to hold everything together in shape over the long term. You know, for me, they started to loosen up fairly quickly as I keep playing in them. I don't know if that description makes sense. But yeah, I would be at least a little bit concerned about the support and lockdown if you were to use this as your only hoop shoe or like beat it up with heavy usage. If we're being nice, that's called an easy break-in process. If we were to hate on this line, that's Nike slacking with what they're giving us. I still have a positive opinion towards the freak line, but material in general, I'd say it's a small downgrade, to be fair. As a consumer buying a signature shoe, I do appreciate the design effort. Not a ton of details, but it's clearly a Giannis shoe. I'm sorry I had to throw away the shoe box, just so it was easier for her to put in the luggage. Giannis loves playing around with the Nike swoosh. Here on this colorway, it has a lot of Chinese ingredients to it. Uh, maybe the first thing you'll notice is the uh, Chinese farmer's hat on the swoosh pattern. What it actually is, uh, this is supposed to mimic the steamer for dumplings, which is his favorite food from China. Apparently, Giannis love dim sum. They don't feel like a steamer in hand though. So don't worry, it's not like the grandma's grocery shopping basket type of texture. It's just the print. You can find more dumplings like on the medial side. On the tongue, they put his nickname in Chinese below the logo. It literally translates to letter bros. I think each year they also made a specific colorway for his nickname. On the insoles, they put like a mushroom there. That's actually because when Giannis tried to say his own nickname in Chinese, the way he said it sounded like how the word mushroom is pronounced in Chinese. Interesting. Some small but pretty cool design perks. Overall, I would say the Freak 6 features mostly sender stuff. It's got nothing crazy out of the box, but as you can expect, it's effective to say the least. Uh, so another solid A-tier performer made by Nike. I know to some people you would have wanted to see more changes or upgrades, but I personally don't have much to complain about with this release. Now where I would rank these basically matches the price point. Uh, I do think the LeBron's, KD's, uh, what else? The Sabrinas are superior. So slightly above the middle from within Nike. Compared head to head against the Freak 5, I think the stability and support features aren't as good, but it does feel like a more comfortable shoe that flows together with your movements on the court. Softer, shorter break-in period, they made a few adjustments back to the standard round so that it's no longer a slanted lace closure, for example, but they'll get loose. Again, this is just a shoe that you would want to wait for good deals on. 
preferably. I think the Team Bank versions this time look great. If you're watching this after seeing them at the Nike outlet in 2025, don't forget to say hi down below. Feel free to let us know any good deals you saw on the Freak 5 recently. Let me know how you feel about the Freak 6 down in the comments. My take on it once again is that the shoe is decent, it's easy to use, beginner friendly, but also gets the job done for elite players. If you're patient enough, I think everything will be way more delicious at a fat discount. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.